I've had to be ingenious on many occasions, so I've always had to look at myself and say, okay, what can you do and what can't you do? I've never tried to be famous or tried to be successful. I've just tried to be good at what I was doing that day. Very simple, actually. I grew up in a place called Merton Park, which is very close to Wimbledon. My father was a doctor, was still a registrar. He hadn't become a consultant or anything that made him any money. My mother had survived World War II from an internment camp. The two of them found one another after the war, and they had three children in quick succession. I was the first. We were a pretty happy family, but we didn't have very much money. I had been born with flat feet and speech impediments, so I was taking a lot of dance classes. I became besotted with dance. I lived and breathed ballet. That was all I wanted to do. I was practicing, practicing, and one day I got a knee injury. I was never able to dance ballet again. I was devastated. My parents insisted when I couldn't dance anymore that I go to teacher's training college and learn how to be a dance teacher. And I remember that was the first time that I ever said to my parents, no, that I was not going to be a teacher, that I was going to go for it and I was going to try and become an actress. Out of challenge, always it came opportunity. Another challenging moment was when I found out that my, um, my husband, um, who had, was the father of my first two children, I found out that he'd been really unfaithful to me. So, divorce, right? I felt incredible failure. I, I, I was beyond devastated. And then they told me that we were bankrupt, completely bankrupt. This was the height of my career. I went to my agent, of course, and I said, look, I'm about to lose my home. Will you tell the networks I'll do anything? And they said, okay, it's a movie of the week, um, but she has to sign for five years in case it becomes a series, but we can pretty much guarantee it won't be. Why? Because it's a woman in the lead, that doesn't work. Medical shows don't work. Westerns definitely don't work, and it's a period piece. Plus it's, you know, children and animals and morality. So I signed, had the meeting there at 10. Noon I was in costumes. The next morning at 6 a.m. I, um, I was working on Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman the show that was never supposed to make it. Last Reckoning, I noticed it's still playing in 98 countries around the world. Becoming a member of Horatio Alger, I think it's probably one of the proudest moments in my life. I want to say thank you to Glenn Stearns and Mindy, and Greg Renka too, of course, who's a member. To be surrounded by people that I respect so much, making a difference in mentoring these amazing kids. I mean, it's, it's a dream come true. It ticks all my boxes.